Why, hello there, pirates and privateers alike. Oh, Shams Nelson here from Pen and Blade. And um, I've decided that I think I'm gonna do a lot more map drawing on this channel because I think that's what you guys like the most. And the map drawing and world building, it's, it's good for the soul. I feel like it's such a great way to relax and enjoy, um, you know, life. And so I thought I'd try out this new setup and draw a little island with you guys and just kind of come up with it off the cuff and see, see what we, what we, um, what we managed to accomplish. And it'll be a bit of a tutorial, you know, how to draw a little island. I'll go through the step-by-step -step method. And at the same time, there's lots of ways to do it. So this will just be one way that I'm feeling like doing today. So I'm actually just going to hold my elbow like really, um, like my whole arm is floating and just kind of let it like just go around and just make a shape. And this is already looking kind of interesting. There's this big bay here where I imagine the main port city might be, you know, the waters will be still here. And actually, since there's like this kind of arm here, I think I could add a, an island chain coming off here. So this could be like, you know, a volcanic island chain. And you know what, since we said volcanic, let's put a volcano in here. And that can be like one of the focal points of the island. I feel like each region I like to have a bit of a focal point. Um, and you know what, I'm not gonna go too much with the sketchiness. So sometimes at this stage, I'll just put in the mountains like that. And then when I come over with a darker pencil or something, I will, you know, make them more um, like cool looking. And like just, I don't want just one set. And actually, you know what, let's put some mountains on this island. Let's make that a very mountainous island. This could be a cool place where there's like some kind of creatures or, you know, it's like some legendary island where it's the Forbidden Island. You know, I think there'll be a little town right here. And you know what, since we're just doing this for fun, I can start putting stuff in more darkly. And I'm gonna use a mechanical pencil just so the lines stay the same thickness for the like final lines. So there's a town here and they're like the keepers of this forbidden island. You know, they're the only ones who travel there and um, bring offerings to the strange beasts. I'm thinking like, I don't, okay, well, I'm just kind of gonna go with what comes to me. Often I like to use like random region generator thing, but um, I'm just, you know, gonna kind of go off the cuff with this one. And so I'm gonna say that there's like these kind of like pterodactyl humanoids, you know, there's some like dinosaur, like lizard folk, but they can fly. And so they're like revered. So maybe there's actually lizard folk in general on this whole island. And you know what, another thing that I think would be cool is, we'll actually use a eraser on the back of this little guy, pop, um, is to make a lot of the island inaccessible by these cliffs. So adding like cliffs like this. And then actually the cliffs just kind of come down and there's like this little area here. That's the one place where you can, where there's like a proper beach that you can actually just like walk right up to the island on. And I think it should be more jungly too. So I'm just gonna indicate that with these U-shaped lines. And, so, and then the bottom ones will be circles with little, you know, sticks coming off the bottom. So let me see if I zoom in, is that nice? That's cool. I can zoom in and zoom out. I'm trying to like, let me know if you guys like this setup. I often work digitally because it's, you know, my hand's not going to get in the way and it's cleaner. But um, I think a lot of people like the traditional vibe and I can appreciate that. It's somehow more relaxing and um, just a different experience. So definitely let me know in the comments if you prefer a digital or traditional map drawing um, for yourself and for these videos. I'm curious. Okay, cool. So let's leave that, let that. And so these, so there's gonna be lizard folk. Let's say that lizard folk are in the south. The south. The, um, and then let, we can call this region like the reptilian south, the, the scaled south, the, um, the split, the split tongued, you know, uh, sp split tongue forest. Um, hmm. I want to have a name for this, and I think this whole region will be a forest. And this is where the lizard folks' like homes are, and maybe there's some weird temple. 
you know, that the lizard folk, it's like this is their main, their main city temple thing. Um, I guess that could be cool. Let's go with that. I'm gonna erase, I think, I wanna work on city markers, so I think I'm gonna start making like little tutorials. Maybe they'll just be mini ones where I'll do like one city marker per video. So there'll be like a town, and then like a temple, and then, you know, a castle, et cetera, et cetera. So while I'm thinking about that, I'll do some mountains. I'll put these mountains in. And so I like to like add like, you know, there's the larger peak, and then like a smaller one, you know, supporting peak. So, but making sure that overall each mountain V has like one, one solid shape, see there, and then I'll just kind of like break it up a little bit like that. And then the ones that are on the edge, you know, I can taper them down like that. And then I just kind of do the same inside. Usually it's a Z shape, so it's like that. There's just that kind of a shape, but make it a little more organic. And that tends to make a cool like shadow side for the mountain. But yeah, the scaled south. I think I'm going to go with that. Um, it's a little alliteration. And it also gives me the idea that it's not just lizard folk. Perhaps this is like a dinosaur. You know, there's dinosaurs in this island. I like that. Dinosaurs are cool. And lizard folks I've seen like, I think it's from Warhammer instead of D&D, &D, but I do like the idea of lizard folk like riding velociraptors and stuff like that. So, um, so we can have that be part of this, this world. I have a small stream of lava kind of coming down, but also I can have some smoke to indicate that this isn't active volcano and the thing is like stereotypically volcanoes you know have like their thing at the top and it's true because they're you know they've got like this is like lava coming out and then it gets higher lava comes out and it builds up so that's kind of makes sense unless it's a new volcano but there could be little offshoots where the pressure kind of pushes through the rocks so there's a lot of pressure coming up here so I'm going to have a little offshoots too. And I feel like one of these offshoots will be where some like temple to some like, you know, fire deity or whatever would be for the lizard folk since it's facing the scaly south. So that's a small detail that I don't know if anyone would notice. I'll put a little cave there. And, uh, and then I will fill in this forest. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that if you add triangle trees, you get a more, it feels more like a, um, like a, you know, like North American type forest, not like a jungly Southern hemisphere. Do they have jungles in the Northern hemisphere? Yeah, they do for sure. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna actually keep them more these, and I actually sometimes add like taller trees to try to make it a jungle. Because there's that secondary like upper canopy in a jungle region. And I'm just gonna work my way down with these U's until I get to the bottom. And so what I might do, I could do that off camera, but I could just do some world building while I, while I do this. So uh, you know what, might as well. And let me know if you guys feel like this video is too long or how you like the format. Because I could also do one video where I kind of like lay it out and then I finish it on my own time. I'll probably do a mix of different videos, but let me know if you have a preference. And then I come back and show you guys the finished map and like the world building I've come up with. So one thing I want to definitely do is add that temple and also write that it's the scaled south. Scaled south, yeah. So what I often do for that is put it in before the forest so the forest can go around it. So I'll put the temple here actually. And then I'll write scale south right in the middle here. Or actually, I think the temple should be centrally located because there'll be like little tribes all around and that's like the central meeting place. So I'll put scaled south up here so they know like where it begins. Maybe I should use pen. 
There's a calligraphy I just remembered works better with, with pen. I'm not going to worry too much, you know, I'm just doing this for fun. I might start opening up commissions to do um, maps. So we'll see about that. I've had a few people request that, but usually I don't take them on because, I don't know, I've just been doing this for fun mostly. Does that look okay? We'll see. It could be better. I wonder if putting these and doing it like that would look better. I actually have the stems down there. Anyways, it is a little bit like when I'm not focusing completely on the drawing. It's not quite as nice. Often I would start with the bottom and then work my way up. But yeah. All right, let's try doing a temple. Let's not overthink it. So this I'm gonna make it like a little bit inspired by Aztec type vibes. And I, wanna, I like to imagine there's a lot of triceratops in the cities, like they might be the labor, uh, the laboring beast, you know what I mean? Like the domesticated creature. And maybe they have a thing with the moon. They're like, I don't know, I think lizards would be more of the sun because they're cold-blooded, right? So they're not going to be as active at night. So, but he's an angry sun. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> it's too cartoony. Let's just make up some kind of a symbol. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to do any trade routes or anything. Because... This is a jungle. And there's lots of little game paths and stuff, but they probably get overgrown quite quickly. So yeah, as I was doing, I often do the bottom of the forest like this. First, and then work my way up. Yeah, let's try putting some of the taller ones, see if that helps it look more like a jungle. I think it does help. And see, I might have, you know what, it's fine, but I was going to say usually I'd leave a little bit of extra space around the markers, but this one's like well into the forest, like well in the jungle, and there's this little bay here where they hunt. I don't know what the name of the like aquatic dinosaurs are, but there's some aquatic, you know, creatures down here and they like hunt them. Um, Cause it's cool to imagine lizard, lizard folks, you know, they got canoes and stuff like that. And that could be a primary food source for this, for this temple, for this gathering place. All right, cool. So we have more human settlements up here at the top, right? We've decided. I was almost gonna just change my medium, but I'll just stick with pencil for this time. Next time we'll try a pen. I don't have my my uh, regular like liner pens here, but um, maybe I'll just try a ballpoint pen and see how that one works out. I think it actually would be nice, just a regular old, you know, like Bic ballpoint pen would be perfect. And I'm thinking like, what if this area is like arid for some reason? I didn't add any rivers, so maybe I'll add a river in here. Like right here would be a cool spot. It feels like there's already a, a little bit of a gap. When there's jungles or forests, I tend to assume a little delta even. I tend to assume that there's like smaller rivers and streams throughout, you know, because there's a lot of rain and like creeks and all that stuff. 
so I'll only usually indicate like main ones, but if I was role playing, like there could be, you know, if we were playing a game and you're in the forest, you can add a stream wherever I feel like and it's fine, or a creek, a source of water. It should be pretty, um, pretty generally located. And you know what could be interesting too? Let's add a, a smaller mountain here. You know, and then this little point here, Maybe we could even give it a name. Oh, um, the Tyranar Plains, you know, this is where the Tyran T-Rexes are. They're not in the jungle area. There's too many trees. They can't really get, a, get around as easily. But here, like, let's say one thing I would think of is like, where's the, the wind coming from and bringing in all the rains? So let's say the wind's coming this direction, right? and it kind of gets funneled into these mountain areas. And for some reason, you know, it kind of skips over this area, it tends to come be attracted more, like hug this side of, of the thing, and then the water comes down here. But there's no river, maybe there's a river that comes here, right, into this bay, makes sense. But it doesn't, there's not as much rainfall um, south of these mountains, okay? These are the Tyranar Plains. And it's a rite of passage for the most um, mighty lizard warriors to hunt a T-Rex, you know? And um, if someone wants to challenge the lizard king, to take his throne, right? One of the first prerequisites is to have hunted. You don't even qualify to challenge him to a one-on-one -on -one duel, you know, um, for, to, to, you know, to become the next ruler because it's like, they're pretty much fascist, I guess. Like they, whoever is the strongest gets to rule in the lizard folk because lizard folks tend to be, I made a video about them about their lore, but they tend to be all about survival and, you know, strength and stuff like that. Not very sentimental. So, um, so yeah, that would make sense for their society if we're living like that, where it's like, okay, whoever's the strongest lizard folk gets to be king. And so one way to just prerequisite is that you have to at least have killed a T-Rex, you know, to, to be um, considered in the running for their political, for political office. Okay, so we haven't really talked much about the north. Let's see what's going on with this little town and this place. So is this going to be, this is not, maybe these flying lizard folk are the ones that are the only ones who really um, have like positive diplomatic relations with the humans in the north because the humans provide them with food and anything that provides them with like survival needs is good. Like they could get their own food, but the humans like uh, cultivate like sheep and stuff like that, you know, like some domesticated animals. Um, so they're, you know, that's like a different food source that they appreciate, but they still put a wall around this city, even though the other guys can fly, but the wall maybe has like some, some guard posts. So let's actually put like one of these these taller, you know, things like that. And actually maybe even on top, it's got one of those you know, um, archery, what are they called, the slots where the archers can shoot out of? Archer slots? <laughs> I'm sure there's a name for them. If someone knows, let me know. I should learn this kind of stuff. And you know, let's put a few scattered trees around here. But why, why did I decide that this might be a plains area too? Let's put a river here. Um, this side of the river doesn't get as much. It's not quite arid though. Let's just put some scattered trees. And maybe this there's also a like a fort here, like a small uh, town, but it's like more of a fortress type town. So this one definitely will have walls too. And this is kind of the lookout town for um, lizard folk, you know, uh, attacks. So if the lizard folk wanted to come to the north, they could do it from here. They, it's unlikely they're going to scale the mountains because the mountains are colder and they don't like that kind of environment. They could go around here. Um, their boats aren't quite, I would say, like fully seaworthy vessels. You know, they're more like canoes and smaller, smaller type ships. So 
Um, I don't think they're too worried about a naval attack, but that could be a surprise, you know. So let's make this, do I want to do this? Since we've established that they have these towers, maybe like that. All right, let's go for that, why not? So these guys, this is, and I kind of want this to be a small outpost. Maybe this looks a little too too large, but maybe it's just sparsely populated. And, um, you know, this is where, like, maybe the army barracks is new recruits have to go down here and prove themselves. So when you join, when you're, like, every, you know, person of a certain age has to join this this army over here, and they come down here to train. So there should be, like, a little path. Um, and then, you know, they have to face the trials of probably fighting some lizard folks and stuff. We'll see what happens. But yeah, okay, cool. And so our main city is going to be over here. So let's make that something like this. Okay, that looks... It looks main city-esque, and with some docks, so you know it's like a port city, something like that. And I might keep things sketchy so that I can, you know, I don't don't want to like fully render everything out as I go. But and then, and you know, I'm kind of like like the whole talking and drawing and kind of keeping sure make sure everything is still on the camera frame and everything is not making my drawings the best that they could be so I'm like maybe I should just leave it light like this and then come back and finish it up later if I want to um we'll see I wonder if I use this if I would actually have a better time I can just sharpen it oh I kind of like those thick lines okay this does make things easier I just gotta learn which tools to use for what like this might be better with the other one, but let's just try this out. We're going to be experimenting. We're just having fun. This isn't like a finished product for anything in particular. This is just some world building, enjoyment. Cool. I think it's better with the sketchy one, this one, to do the, the cities, but the coastlines, I think, is actually... Maybe, like, I just saw, like, this side looks like it's fallen, but maybe it is crumbling. Maybe there wasn't like an attack at some point and this side of the wall has been destroyed. But why wouldn't they repair it? Maybe, hmm, what could be the reason? It just recently happened, perhaps. And what could have done that? A neighboring, oh, a fleet of pirates. They've got a pirate problem. This could be another map. Well, it's not in the pirate map book, so I don't know if I can canon you know, I can add it to that uh, that region. We'll see. We'll see. It could be that uh, a nearby island. And let's just name the city. Why not? Um, I hope this isn't from Lord of the Rings or something. Elendor. That sounds like something from Lord of the Rings. It's a little too elvish. Elviad. Does that sound more elvish? <laughs> Whatever, Elviad. <laughs> Literally has elf in it. Eliad. El... I'm just going to go Elviad. Let's not overthink things. All right, cool. So actually everything's aligned like that. All right. Yeah, Elviad. I haven't named everything. That's okay. I'll just name the main places. And then we've got this whole region here to finish up. So what do we want to do with that? That is the question. Hmm. We'll finish up the coastlines. Maybe we'll use this guy. And you know what? There should be some more mountains. So let's put a couple large mountains here. And this is where there's like a temple. Um, this is either like some holy mountains. So there's like a clerical or clerical order that has their monastery up here. So maybe that's like a longer building.
with like a little something on top. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research on markers. Oops. What is that? Why do I have to put a little something on top? Because it's like they're, they're like obelisk. They're little. Could that be just an obelisk? Maybe that's a giant crystal. Okay, what if there are like caves with like enormous crystals in here? And there's just one giant crystal just sticking up out of the ground. And so a clerical order has like grown around that because it actually, it's a healing. It's a, it has healing properties. So anyone who touches the crystal is instantly healed of any ailments. And um, so the clerics have learned how to channel this power themselves by being around it and by studying it and everything like that. So there's like this healing clerical order and you have to kind of like trek halfway up this mountain to get there. And actually maybe let's make it a little more difficult. What if it's like deep in the mountains? So like anyone who wants to be healed has to go on this like whole pilgrimage and trek through like pretty, pretty tough terrain to get there. There might even be, you know, like goblins and uh, ogres living up in these, these mountainous areas. So there's a path that goes here. And then there's like a one, you know, like way station slash mining town over here. Where actually you will find some of the more civilized goblins actually will come down and do trading here. And maybe this one's called Gobsmack. In fact, this small town was, um, was founded by a group of entrepreneurial type goblins. So it seems like there's a past, but like, let's, let's be real guys. It's, it's still a journey. It's still a journey, especially if you're not feeling well. So gobsmack, the goblins, you know, were like, instead of just trying to rob people who come through, let's like start and like, you know, offer them uh, like inns and there's probably like stuff like gambling and things like that, you know, or like games of chance and skill that are rigged and uh, weird like goblin theater potentially up in gobsmack. Okay. And then this is called, um, should it just be Crystal Mountain? Um, we'll see if something else comes to mind. And then, so this, the winds come, and then maybe they like split here, right? So this top part, the winds come in and they go, so they bring the clouds over here too. So we're going to have like a forest region in here. Um, and we can call it. I'm trying, I'm going to random region generate in my own mind, mind. So this will be called Red Hawk, the Red Hawk Forest. I'm not going to overthink it. Because there's some cool Red Hawks. Perhaps Falconry is a, um, is a popular, what's it called? And these ones may be more of this, like, uh, what do they call it? Not evergreen. There's deciduous and the other kind of forest that's coniferous. I think this is a more coniferous forest. Actually, I kind of wish it was Red Hawk Woods. Okay, I'm going to change it. I think I can still change it. Is that loud? If not, just don't tell anyone, okay? Red Hawk Wood. Woods? Red Hawk Wood. Red Hawk Woods. Woods. I think that's good. And so there should be a little town over here too. Um, where, you know, there's more hunters and they collect furs and stuff like that. And I think this town would also cater to people who are traveling. Um, and I think like maybe people come from far and wide, like other lands, other islands, and they travel to Elviad and um, make the journey 
to um, where are we going to call that? So that's kind of the focal point of the north, actually. And so, yeah, there's a couple little focal points. This one's called um, um, like Sky Lizard Island. Let's call this Sky Lizard, Sky Lizard Isle. Because I like to think of like these focal points so that like if I was running an adventure here and people were to go to one of these places, they'd be like, oh, okay. Um, the Red Hawk, and this will be called the City of Red Hawk. And I want to put the name there. They'll just be like, kind of like, yeah, this is the town associated with these woods. And, um, you know, they hunt there and there's probably, you know, some, some good, be like mushrooms, uh, what other kind of stuff would, would you find in the forest? Wood, you know, to export wood to LVAD for buildings, you know, this is where they do most of the uh, the lumber mill kind of town. And yeah, so then we have this whole area we'll finish up with, and then we'll have created our, our little map. We can zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing coming together. Now what do we want to put here? This would be a cool time to be collaborating with you guys. Um, so let's see, we've got, this could be more of like a plains area. We're going to have less rainfall here, I think. So I'm thinking, this is where a random region generator is great. Do we want something evil here? Well, let's look at what we've got and then let's see like what might be the natural thing. So we've got goblins up here in the north. We've got um, lots of lizard folk here, so they might be coming up on this side. And maybe there's a more civilized, like, lizard folk, where lizard folk and humans kind of are able to get along more. The more civilized lizard folks are able to come and, like, make a living and do some trading. This is actually a little port city, but most, uh, most people come to Elviad because that's, like, the, the place that's, um, like, truly more civilized and safe. But if you're like a pirate and you need to trade some stuff, you might come down to this little city of, um, what do I want to call it? Like sea winds. That's what came to mind. I'm just kind of going to go with the first thing that comes to mind. So the little town of sea winds. And I'll do it like this. And it makes me think that there might be because Wince made me think of Witch. And I'm thinking, like, this could also be a place to get your weapons enchanted and stuff. Like, there's some weird, especially, like, the lizard folk, shaman and things like that might live here and charge you to, you know, get some weird enchantments. But they also might pull a trick on you. Every once in a while, you'll get one that, like, will charge you and, like, do something, but it's actually, like, a curse and not, you know, not a blessing. And there's no path to see Winch from Elviad because these... This is more of like like rolling hills, and there are nomadic types. So there are nomads who graze. This is where they graze their their sheep. I know these don't look like rolling hills. Let's put a little couple more hills. And so to get from from El like Sea Winch is not like an official officially recognized city, but everyone knows it's there. So the paths to get here are more about finding a uh, nomad and, and I remember I think I had this in another map that I made but I feel like they ride giant badgers so there are uh, badgers that are like the more rare creature and then they herd like sheep is the general you know thing that's herded out here by the nomads but they ride the badgers badgers are basically like horses and so you can you know get get passage with them through this area, and why wouldn't you just go by yourself? Well, there isn't too much to eat, I guess. There's grasses and stuff, it's more of a grassy plain, so it's like you could bring your own food and go. But there's probably something dangerous out here too. And that thing is, hmm, maybe there are these little patches of forest. And in these patches, Maybe like lizard folk often hide out there. And if you're just by yourself, I don't know. I'm gonna let you guys decide. What, what is the, like, what are the dangers of going through, um, um, uh, 
Badger Fall Plains. I don't know why Badger Fall, but that's just what it's called. So if you also know why it's called Badger Fall, then you can let me know. And what are the dangers of Badger Fall Plains? I want to hear that in the comments and get some collaboration in here. And if your idea is awesome, it becomes canon to the Pen and Blade universe. I've made a bunch of maps and one day maybe I'll compile them all into a whole world. And uh, a lot of people have contributed cool ideas, so that'll become canon. So I think this is the whole, the whole island we've got here. What do you guys think? Is this an island or isn't it? <laughs> so what could we call this island? We shall call it... Um, the Isle... Okay, you know what? The title of this island will be in the description or the title of this video because I want to give it a little bit of thought. I'm not feeling like this. All right, cool. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more map drawing, you know, stuff like this. And peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone. Ah, I have some fine videos for sale for you here. One of them over there, huh? <laughs> Subscribe. Okay.